Next one's from Brad Zawacki, and the subject is legendary storylines. Hey guys, I've been fortunate to watch legendary storylines since the early 80s. The most notable for me in a no particular order. War to settle the score, which is Hogan versus Piper tied in the lead up, up to WrestleMania 1. The Bloodline story. NWO formation, the blurring the lines of reality. Dusting his battles with the four horsemen. What storylines are most memorable to you? Um, my, you know, one of the biggest heated, like as far back as I can remember, for me, was the Tommy Rich versus Buzz Sawyer feud, in mm. in, in, in in Atlanta, bro. It was just bloody. They, they, both of them looked like they could fight. You know, they would bleed. They both cut great promos. Tommy Rich was an excellent promo. A southerner, you know, like, you know, fire, let's get fired. Great you know? fire. And Buzz Sawyer was like a, a, a mean. Right, yeah, I mean, And then, bro, they were just like going, I mean, they drew, but that Omni would sell out. And like, like they had a, they had an angle for like months. And it was like that, you know, that, that was, a, that was great TV. Um. You know the bloodline story, obviously, because it's been such you know in the, in the new age of storytelling with the, with the backstage segments and stuff for things, it's, it's been one of the best ones ever. You know, obviously Austin and and Vince McMahon, Austin Brett, I liked a lot. Um, yeah, there's been tons, been tons. What, what about you, Conan? Yeah, I like all the ones the guy mentioned and all the ones you mentioned. I also liked a modern one. I liked a lot the CM Punk versus the establishment angle. Those promos with him and Hunter and Vince were classic. Oh, right. You know, I was a big fan of the storyline uh, in ECW of um, when supposedly uh, Tommy Dreamer was blinded and then he really wasn't. And then he came. Oh, Sam was, was blind. Sam was blind. Sam was blind. Yeah. Right. He faked yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There, I like that. There. In in the spring into the summer of 98 in WWE, when they were starting to turn the tide against WCW, there was these two feuds going on. One was uh, Austin and Foley, okay? And the other one was Undertaker and Kane. And so from like April until September, those guys all wrestled in different combinations where they'd wrestle each other. There's a tag match, Hell in the Cell, whatever. And I just thought that was really good. The way they were all kind of interlocked and they kept switching and oh now it'll well, be a tag they, they and also gonna go very, to taker. They did yeah. something very intelligent too during all that. And like it, bro, it's funny how people like would, would criticize Russo for this. But they did, did this was this was good TV. They did an angle where Kane was gonna be wrestling Austin in her first blood match. And mm -hmm. everybody's like, Well, how in the world is Austin gonna win this? Kane's covered from head to toe in closed mask. How's he gonna make him bleed? Right, so, so you know, it was, it was a good, it was a good thing. But in the end, Undertaker came out and hit Kane because because Kane said if he was, this was the angle, okay? Kane was <laughs> covered from head to toe, yeah. so he there's no way he could, he could bleed. You know, he, he had the mask; you'd have to cut him in the back of the head or something, right? Kane said that if he lost, he would set himself on fire. Right. Okay? Now that's ridiculous, but it's like you know, it was just you know, with Jr. selling it, it's like you believed it, okay? Mm -hmm. So the gimmick was that Undertaker, you know, came out and like, even though he was in an angle with Kane at the time, he nailed Austin with the chair and it yep. busted Austin open and Austin lost the match. Right. <laughs> so Undertaker, Kane and Paul Bearer come out. They cut the promo and Undertaker basically says, you know, I wasn't going to let my, you know, so I'm, all the problems we had, I'm not going to let my brother burn himself alive. Because mm -hmm. he'd do it. He's crazy, you know. <laughs> so, right? Austin comes out and said, Time got uh, time out. You know, th this is ridiculous. The stipulation of the match was which person could 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 give the other one first blood. He goes, It wasn't Kane that gave me first blood, it was the Undertaker. I want my rematch. Right. Yep. <laughs> so it's like and like and basically Kane had to accept because he was right. And then, and then literally the next night, in a very logical way of storytelling, they got to, like, you know, Austin dropped the belt the one, one night and came back and won it the next night because the story made perfect sense. You know, and that that's like, those are the, those are the angles you remember is when the stuff makes good sense and, like, you know, was very logical and stuff. So, yeah, I, I don't, you know. Do you remember, do you remember that angle, Conan? Yeah. And, yeah. and everything you're talking about there kind of took place to the middle, to the end of June. And yeah. Undertaker and Austin didn't wrestle until SummerSlam in August. So there was right. two more months of them 
you know, going back and forth and finding more reasons to hate each other and all that. You're gonna you're gonna like this thing. Oh, what about what about you, Conan? Do you, did, did you did you mention anything you liked? Old angles? Yeah, I said the CM yeah, Punk yeah, yeah. versus establishment. Right. Right, 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 CM right, right, Punk right. versus establishment. I like the Hogan Macho feud when they broke up because he had his hand on a little bit. Um, <laughs> I. I I actually <laughs> like the Eddie Ray Dom angle because when they first told me about it, I was like, how are they even going to make this work? And they did, right. you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't as good as the eye for an eye, uh, the eye for an eye between Ray Mysterio and Seth Rollins. <laughs> right. I mean, nothing will ever right. be that good. Or right. when, uh, when uh, Kid Romeo had the idea to have a feud over glow sticks, nothing will ever top right. that, but these came close. <laughs> Remember that? Plus, I, I gotta mention uh raven and dreamer that went on for you know of course two, you do. three years GCW, first. Yeah, of course oh. you do joe that's the raven still pod, going. By the, you want to promote the podcast you and raven the, the raven effect podcast. Yeah, raven effect with me raven and rich bikini every monday listen to it on speaker we get 10 percent more 